Hello my dear students, now we are going to start our next chapter, chapter 2, under the title of Professionalism, Team, Meeting, Listening, Nonverbal and Etiquette Skills. Now, adding value to professional teams, what do digital age employers want? Have you asked yourself, what do employers want? Do they need education? Yes. Do they need experience? Of course. Hard skills are important? Yes. Technical expertise in your field? Yes. But is it enough only to have these three points and that's it? No, because we are in the digital age. You need to equip yourself with soft skills, which are communication and interpersonal abilities. All the four points are important. You can't ignore any of them. Is it enough only to have a soft skills and to ignore the hard skills? No, definitely no. Is it important to have education? Yes. So you need to combine all of this in order to be a good employee. So this is a reality check. Technical skills are not enough. Workers need soft skills. Of course, we agree that it's important. So you need to have oral and written communication skills written as we said before to know how to write business English. And you have studied this in our previous course together. We knew the difference between formal informal writing and informal writing. You have academic English and business English. So now you know how to differentiate between the different types of English. Here in this course, we are only talking about business English. Active listening is important. So it's not only listening for the sake of listening. You need to listen actively, to take notes, to know what's going on, to write down. It's not only listening and you are thinking in something else. Proper business etiquette, appropriate nonverbal behavior, the eye contact, the posture, the gesture, all of these are important. Efficient and productive teamwork. It's important to be part of a team and to work in an efficient way. It's not only I'm a member and that's it. You need to have a role in this team, to encourage everyone to work, to have ideas, to think of ideas, and not to block others' ideas. So why form teams? Why it's important to work in teams? Some or many students have always asked this question. Why should you work in teams? I'm better working individually. But yes, you have to work in teams because this means better decision, increased productivity, improved employee morale, faster response, less resistance to change, reduce risk, buy-in, greater. So now we are talking about collaborating in virtual team. We are in the digital era. So no need for, or it's not important only to have teams with real people. You can have virtual teams. We can work with people from different countries and different backgrounds because collaborate with co-working in other cities and countries, coordinate tasks across time and geographic zone, accomplish shared tasks without face-to-face -face contact, participate, collaborate locally, pool expertise from various diverse contributors because we are, you are people from different backgrounds, different countries, each one of you has his or her own expertise and own experience, so sharing all of this together, it would be very beneficial. The four phases of a team development. Either it's a virtual team or a real team, you'll go through these four phases. The first phase is the forming, where you select a member, become acquainted with them, build trust, and this is very important, form collaborative culture. And then this would lead to the next phase, which is storming, identifying problem, collect and share information, establish decision criteria, and then setting goals. In norming stage, you discuss alternative, apply the criteria, and then prioritize the alternatives. The last stage is performing, where you select alternative, analyze effects, implement plan, manage the project. And then you are going to succeed, hopefully, if you followed all these pieces. These are the positive behavior that you should adopt while you are in the team. You need to set rules and abiding by them. It's important to have the code of rules, but the most important is to follow these rules. It's not only written for the sake of just having a code. Analyzing the task, defining problem, contributing information and ideas, gathering your ideas together, showing interest and listening actively, encouraging member to participate. So you have 
and it's your role to encourage everyone to say his or her idea and to participate in the project. It's deciding points of agreement and finding common. Also, we have negative team behavior like blocking the ideas of others, insulting, criticizing others, putting them down, letting them feel that they are not important and their idea is not important yet and not caring, wasting the good time, making improper jokes and comments, failing to stay on task, and most dangerously to withdraw, failing to participate. So this means that it's a complete failure. You couldn't be a member of a team. Reaching good decision through majority consensus is minority averaging authority rule with we have six steps for dealing with conflict if you follow this six steps then hopefully you are going to reach a resolution for your problem the first step is listen to understand to the problem so here you are listening actively you have an aim a purpose behind listening to understand Step number two is to understand other points of view, to understand why the other people are saying this, why do we have problem. In number three, you show that you care about the relationship. In number four, you try to find a common ground, to invent alternative. Now we have the problem, we know, and I have understood all your point of view. Now let's think together, looking for an alternative. Finally, reaching an agreement based on what is fair. So, if in any problem you face in your life, if you follow these six steps, you are going to find a solution for your conflict and you reach a common ground when everyone would feel satisfied with. Planning a productive meeting. Meet only when the topic demands a rich medium because it's important, as we said. So, we don't have meeting for the sake of having meeting. If it's not unambiguous or something which is routine, then go for the medium. Write an email, memo, report, or whatever. But while planning for a meeting, to make it successful, you have to invite the right people. Distribute an agenda. Train participants on technology, and this is very important. Yeah. Don't have a meeting and the people don't know how to use this technology because it would be a great failure. Use a digital calendar for schedule. While running the meeting, you have to start on time, introduce an agenda. Agenda, it means the point we are going to talk about in this meeting or the topics we are going to discuss. Appoint a secretary and a recorder. Encourage the participation. Summarize along the way as not people to be distracted. Confront conflict frankly. Yes, we have a problem and we have to confront it and find it. While ending the meeting and following up, you need to review the meeting decision. Distribute minutes of meeting. Minutes, it means the points we have covered during the meeting. And what we said, remind people of action item. Remind them that they have a set or we have set together actions and we need to follow this stuff or this items. Being a productive participant in a meeting, you need to arrive early and come prepared, have a positive atti attitude, contribute respectively, wait for others to finish, don't just interrupt them while they are talking, keep your voice calm, pleasant, yet loud. Give credit to others, use electronic devices only for meeting related tasks, don't just use your mobile phone or laptop or whatever for something else. Show them that you are listening actively. Help summarize. Summarizing is very important as not to lose track. Express your views in the meeting, not later. Follow up by completing assigned tasks. Virtual meetings. Now because we are in the digital era, we have virtual meetings. We have different kinds. The first kind we have is audio conferencing. It means conference only using sound. It's simple, effective, most commonly used tools include a speakerphone, telephone, mobile phone, also known as conference calling, phone conferencing. The second type is video conferencing. Now, it means that we are having a video, a sound, and a picture. But this one is a bit expensive because you need to have a room, and this room needs to be equipped in order to have this video conference. But they are connecting in real time, it's good to organize, it's saving expenses of travel and saving uh, more the worker from fatigue and greenhouse gases. The most successful is the third type. It combines the benefits of all, the web conferencing. It's inexpensive, easily accessible, used to share electronic document, demonstrate product, participate, interact in real time. Tools include computer, internet access, and camera. 
planning virtual meetings. Before having a virtual meeting, you need to make sure that everyone knows how to operate technology, distribute documents in advance, yeah, previously, and log in early, explain how to ask and answer question, say your name before speaking. Forms of nonverbal communication. As we said, the eye contact is very important to have an eye contact to the one you are talking to. It's a kind of etiquette. Facial expression, the posture and the gestures is need to be welcoming, encouraging, showing the people that you are eager, you want to learn, you want to hear. Time is important, space, appearance, the personal appearance. Showing professionalism when communicating. Establish and maintain eye contact. As I said, the posture. Reduce or eliminate physical barriers. Improve your decoding skills. Prompt for more information. Ask for more information. Interpret nonverbal meaning in context. Associate with people from diverse cultures. Appreciate the power of appearance. Observe yourself on the video in the friends. Gaining an etiquette. So you you need to use polite words. Express sincere appreciation and praise, praise other people, give them credit, respect co-worker space. If you are going to work in a co-working space, then leave it clean. Don't ruin anything. Be selective in sharing personal information. Don't share personal information if it's not necessary in work. Don't put people down. Don't disappoint them. Encourage them to work. Rise above other rudeness. If someone is rude to you, don't follow him. Don't be rude. Be considerate when sharing space and equipment. Choose the high road in a conflict. Don't use high sound. Don't use improper language. But be calm. Speak in a proper and a good language and a polite language. The most important is to disagree agreeably. You have the full right to disagree. But other people also have the right to disagree or agree to what you are saying so everyone has his or her point of view and it's fine that we are not sharing the same point this is fine that's it for chapter two now we are going to move to discussion in your discussion you have to think about how you typically interact with people during conversation and then answer the following question how would you describe your listening skills? Are you a better listener in a certain situation? If so, why? What are two areas that you are going to focus on in the upcoming week to improve? Finally, what are three or four strategies you can use to improve your listening in the two areas you identified? You can find these strategies in your book or you can come up with strategies from your mind. Your assignment is Imagine you are on a work team. You have two people who make all the decisions. These two people tend to work closely. They ignore your input in the meeting. Two other team members have stopped contributing to the team, sometimes don't even attend, because these two people are taking everything for themselves. The team has been together for over three months now. Your supervisor wants you to talk with the entire team about how all of you can function together and work more effectively as a cohesive team, as a team. So now you need to write an essay between 400 to 500 words. You have to answer these questions. What will you say when you address the entire team? What strategies would you recommend the team put in place so the team can function more effectively? What are two possible objections you might get from your team members? How would you overcome those two objections during the meeting so that's it your assignment you have also quiz for this module thank you my good luck my dear students